But when I realized that he was the captain in Vegas at the time of the shooting, that's why I was like, how did he get here? How did he get here? I covered in another video how 50 days after he started at this job, he asked for a 23% raise and they gave him 29% raise. He asked for $40,000 more, they gave him $50,000 more, less than two months on the job. Another thing to note is that he was still working in Las Vegas when he got this job and there were four other candidates who were Lahaina residents. This guy had to sell his house, find a house, put his kid in school, while anyone who was already a, 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 a resident of Lahaina or Maui wouldn't have to do any of that. Not only did they take him, they also gave him a fucking 30% raise within two. So obviously this is all very sketchy, right? I'm obviously very disturbed by this whole thing. Then Christmas Eve sisters over here says, have you looked into Terry Jones's death? Terry Jones was his secretary and she had apparently worked for the department for like 30 years. And obviously she was a Maui native. The timing on that is extremely fucking suspicious. So his raise is approved. Pelletier's raise is approved February 9th, okay? Before I get into Terry Jones, I found this letter while I was researching it. A letter that a citizen, her, the tail end of her email is hawaii.rr.com, Dana Puckett. So I don't know if she works for them or what, but she writes a letter to the salary.commission at Co Maui. I'll show you. She writes this email, okay? Clearly, the residents were having the same problem about this guy than, that we are. I'm writing in regards to the Maui Police Commission giving a pay raise to Chief John Pelletier from 158 per year to 205 after only 50 days on the job. The Maui Police Commission has already altered Hawaii revised statute HB number 1534 to allow both a chief and a deputy chief of police to bypass the Hawaii residence requirement of one year. So they already amended a statute that required one year residency for a police chief and deputy chief in order to hire him. What was so important about him? What was so special about him that they had to amend a statute to ship him in here, given all of the hardships he was going to have to endure in order to come? Not only that, the Maui Police Commission also gave him $50,000 to move to Maui. They wouldn't have had to give $50,000 if they had hired one of the other four natives that were candidates for the job. Now the Maui Police Commission wants to give him a $46,149 raise after 50 days on the job. Police Chief John Pelletier knew fully well what the job paid and has specifically stated several times that it was not about the money. I agree with what uh, Claire Carroll from Hannah uh, stated in the Hawaii News now article, police chief John Pelletier should prove his worth before being handed a $46,000 pay raise. Why can't we wait six months to see how things go? Commission member Mark Redeker stated in the Hawaii News Now article that, and in this quote, and in this particular case, he's working very hard and doing a lot of things we wanted him to do. What exactly? Oh, and then she says, what exactly did you want him to do? I can tell you right now that morale at Maui Police Department is as low as anyone working there has ever seen. I'm talking about good and honorable officers, men and women that have 20 to 30 years in the department. They say they cannot support this new administration. Another two or three will retire within a few me uh, months. Officers with 15 to 20 years are going to quit. They are willing to sacrifice their pensions. And we know from yesterday's video that there were several who were on record sacrificing, giving up their pensions, quitting early after 30 years on the job because they couldn't handle the work environment. They say they cannot support this new administration. Another two or three years will, will retire within a few months. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, blah, blah, blah. They are willing to sacrifice their pensions. I already said that this sounds pretty bad to me. The community relations section, which was quite a successful section, was completely scuttled. Why? For what reason? There was no discussion, no informing the public, no informing SHOPO, S-H-O-P-O, no meeting with the two chiefs. All the section commander received was a series of curt emails demanding that, quote, effective immediately, you will no longer be this, you will no longer be that, move out of your office by this time. What in the world is going on over there at MPD? What are we going to do if they all quit? 
Are we going to lower the standard of excellence in training that made MPD one of the most highly trained and respected agencies in the country? Are we going to allow this police chief to bring in from wherever, rank for rank, all of the people he thinks he needs to fill this department? Who is going to vet these new officers? I'm very concerned about this. It's a known fact that police departments all over the country have been infiltrated by hate groups, white supremacy, KKK, Oath Keepers, Proud Boys, and much more. MPD and Maui are melting pots of all cultures working in harmony together, and we need to keep it that way. I'm not sure what the Maui Police Commission wanted these two chiefs to do, but whatever it was, it's not working. Please, for the sake of the many honest and hardworking police officers at MTV, MPD, wait on the payways. It's like a slap in the face to them. And please look into whatever is causing the very low morale and officers retiring at such an unheard of rate. This is insane. I did not know that they also paid him 50 grand to move there when there were four other candidates who were natives, who were well aware of the low morale and back when this, so, so the article that I had read to you guys yesterday was from what, like July or something like that. This was back in February. So before they approved the raise on February 9th, they were well aware that people were quitting, dropping like flies, people that were giving up their pensions when they were one or two years away from vesting. And there was a one year residency requirement. They amended a statute to bring him and his little co-captain deputy chief in. Why? Why? Which brings me to this question. Terry Jones, his secretary who had worked there for like 30 years. First, let me tell you the bullshit he says about her in, um, in a press release. This woman was the matriarch of this department. Everyone knew Terry. Everyone loved Terry. There's a void MPD has that most likely will never be filled. Terry did so much for so many people, so many charities, all the fundraisers she did, all the bake sales she did. She gave of her time, her effort, and her own money to do everything she could for everybody else. That's a lot to say for someone that you knew for less than two months, by the way. She, di she died on February 24th, a Thursday morning. 4.40 a.m. 4.40 a.m. So anyway, he knew her for less than two months, exactly two weeks after his pay raise goes through. Pay raise goes through February 9th, and she's mysteriously killed February 24th at 4.40 a.m., chasing a purse snatcher. She's allegedly helping her um, daughter to deliver newspapers and somebody stole her purse from her car. An, um, another motorist, the motorist gets into a car and she chases them and she loses control and crashes into a tree. She's not wearing her seatbelt and her airbags deployed and there was nobody else in her car. Where was her daughter? She was helping her daughter to deliver. I'm confused. 4.40 a.m. seems like the exact right time to crash a car and have no witnesses. Something tells me that this lady wasn't going to keep any secrets. And two weeks after the raise, she's dead. Hmm.